how much there? Oh. 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 Yes. Sorry, dear, I haven't got my specs. Twenty. Madam, would you mind if I looked in your shopping bag? Why, dear? Would you mind? The bread's not on the receipt. The milk is not the bread. I've got to get back, ma'am. I'm sorry, dear. I've got my job to do. Come on, then. None of that. I've seen all that before. <laughs> Here, ma'am. Why have you been 40 in a place that size? Wee little ones. Uh, shall I tell him you're on your way? What? The dog. I didn't ask for a doctor. Oh, well, well, look, look, it's the old lady done for shoplifting. She's not very clever. Shoplifting's uniform business. Yeah, look, the doctor thinks you should see her. Oh, well, all right, all right, I'm just coming, OK? Yeah, well, look, can you get the uh, serial numbers, the makes, things like that? Yeah, straight away. What did you have for breakfast, Mrs. Runch? Why did you go shopping with only 22p in your purse? Did you have any breakfast at all? Can you rustle up a nice hot cup of tea? Plenty of sugar. Mm -hmm. You know what malnutrition is? It's not eating. And it's what you've got. Now, why don't you eat properly? I do eat proper. I had porridge this morning. I like a bit of porridge and a bit of toast. What you doing? Now, you just go on talking to the inspector. Get your hands oh, off. It's all right, Mrs. Rudge. He's just going to take your blood pressure. It won't hurt. I don't want him to. Get him off. What happened here, Mrs. Rudge? Then nothing. Bites. Insect bites. It's a flat. I went to see the man at the Do you cancer. smoke, Mrs. Rudge? <laughs> well, I've seen scars like that before. They're burns. Done with a cigarette. The lighted cigarette, it, it was held against the flesh for, for several seconds. She has been in shock, of course. It must have taken a lot of courage for her to get up and go out shopping. Yes. Or maybe it was hungry. What? Well, I, I don't know what she had to eat for the last couple of weeks. Not much by the look of it. Serious malnutrition. Perhaps it was the burns. She wasn't well enough to go out and buy anything. 22 pence. Sorry? Well, she went shopping with just 22 pence. I wonder what that's got to do with the burns. Well, I'd like to keep her in for a couple of days. Treat her arms. Sounds like a good idea. Get some food inside of her. Well, look, I'll try and um, pick up some of her family. What's the time, dear? It's only half past ten. Are you going somewhere? Yeah, got to be somewhere. That's nice. Hello, Mrs. Rush. How are you feeling, eh? OK. Mrs. Rush, have you got any family living in London? Any sons or daughters? Family? Or grandchildren? His son went to Australia just after the war. He used to write regular every month. Have you got anyone else? No. Well, look, the doctor thinks you should stay here for a couple of days just to get your strength up. Here? Well, you haven't been eating, have you, Mrs. Rush? You can't stay here. Why haven't you been eating properly? I've got to get back. There's nothing to worry about, Mrs. Rush. I've got to get back. Expected. Who by? Friends of mine. You need a good rest, Mrs. Rush. Be looked after. I can look after myself. Where's me at? You want us to get her back? No, it's all right. Come on, Mrs. Rush. We're going home. We're what? I'll take you back. Yeah, but I'm not. Well, just you and me in my car. It's on my way. 
I'm not going with you. Would you like to go home in an ambulance, Mrs. Rudge? I'm going home on me own. Look, Mrs. Rudge, you're not well. I just want to see everything's all right. Food and everything. No. Just take me as far as the street. Nobody's going no further than that. You can get hold of that other woman for me. What's that supposed to be? It's a Krennic. Would have thought that was obvious. Is it yours? I thought you might like it. Miss Hubble? Yeah, I have D.I. Forbes one. Miss Hubble? Detective Inspector Forbes? I believe you know a Mrs. Rudge of Hill Green Estate, Coventry House. Well, you know of her? Yes, well, do you think you could get to know her a bit better, Miss Hubble? The uh, supermarket has done her the shoplifting, but that's not the point. She hasn't been eating properly, and somebody has been using her right arm as an ashtray. No, I mean somebody has been torturing her, Miss Hubble. Well, perhaps you haven't been knocking loud enough. Yes, well, um, do you think you could get over there and see what's going on? Thanks. Perhaps we can have a chat later. Hasn't spoken to her for two years. They can't talk to everyone. Okay, but why is it the ones they never talk to are the ones who get hurt? Did you say torture? Yes, that's right. <laughs> Happening here on this patch. What kind of person does that? Got to be a nutter. That's right, a nutter. Somebody we have to look after because it's a caring society. How is it that we can never look after the old women who get beaten, but we've always got plenty of time and money and colour tellies for the ones who do the beating? Why? Nice. Yeah. I meant the crime, not the picture. Nobody gets their arms burnt. Somebody could lose a lot of money. Some people have got a lot of money to lose, unlike some other people. Getting involved. You did see the old lady, sir. She did. She simply won't talk to me. Well, she doesn't know you, does she? Oh, she must have seen me around. I've certainly seen her. Apparently she's not well. Neither would you be if you didn't eat. What does she do with her money? Well, it doesn't go very far. That's something further than a bottle of milk. I'd like to see inside that flat. You're a police officer? I think that would probably be the wrong thing to do. She's hiding something, covering up for somebody. Couldn't you talk to her? <laughs> if I get the chance. Well, couldn't you make the chance? I mean, couldn't you be in the right place at the, at, at the right time? She can't stay in there forever. <laughs> what do you expect me to do, camp outside her house? I've got a lot of people to see, Inspector. Oh, Bradley offers Mrs. Bright. Well, that's a matter of opinion. You can't be serious. Well, I'll do what I can, but I'm not making any promises. I'm not asking for promises. It's a bit of action. These weren't done today? No, they're four or five days old. Not from the fall? No, no, I think not. Well, they look like blows. Kicks? Mm, they could be. Oh, my God. Well, that's why I let you know, Inspector. Mrs. Rudd, she's had a very bad time. Bad time? Please cover up.
We don't know yet whether the injuries were job. caused. I can't help her now. You can. My job is to get the people who did it. Well, yes. Yes, well, but I'll need her help. Oh, Mrs. Rutgers, what you've just seen. Well, she's got to wake up, hasn't she? I mean, she's sick, but she's still alive. She's got to come round sooner or later. Yes, and when she does, I want to be here. I well, want you to ring me at once, night or day. Okay, but she she might not be able to remember very much. Well, Mrs. Rutgers is the only person who knows who did this. She may remember just enough. I'll be waiting for the call. It's that important? Doctor, those people are still out there. After Mrs. Rudge, who the hell next? The important thing is to keep it moving, the picture or whatever. Build up a list of acceptable owners and then at the right moment stick it in the public auction and buy it back. Sort of makes it legitimate, if you can get away with it. Half the value lies in the provenance. Who owned it and when? I mean, take the original. You take it. Sorry? My, I don't care. You don't care? It's one fat cat nicking the cream off another fat cat. I should lose sleep over them. This is a worldwide racket. There's millions of quid involved. I can believe it. But you're not bothered? It's just money. What's that supposed to mean? You can't hurt money. It's only paper. I'm talking about the people who handle the money. No, you're not. You're talking about valuables, works of art, bank balances. I'm talking about people who don't even know what a bank balance is. When you hurt them, it's got to be physical. They end up in a public ward, unconscious. Okay. Look, come and have a cup of coffee. I've got a heap of stuff. Ten here. minutes isn't going to change anything. Just pretend for ten minutes that not everything's bad all the time. Oh, well. Why not? I thought you might want to see this. Put it on the desk. What is it? Or was it? Oh, looks like... Death aid. Why should I want it? Belongs to an old lady from Gilby Street, just by Hill Green. What happened to it? She was going down for her pension. They were waiting for her by the underpass. Knocked her down, grabbed her purse. Only a couple of bob in it, someone got hold of her death aid. Pulled it off her, threw it on a pavement and smashed it with his boot. Just thought you'd want to see it. What was that you said about pretending? I'll make that coffee a scotch. Oh, that'll change everything. It'll change nothing. Neither will you, sitting here going out of your mind. Pull yourself together. You're a bloody police officer, not a leading lady. And the act's getting a bit hammy now. Come on. I can't fight them on their terms, on their ground. I don't understand them, Mike. They don't understand themselves. Look, kids who fight authority. Well, that I can understand. Kids who hate coppers, hate their teachers, hate their dads, anyone with muscle. It makes a sort of sad sense they're getting their own back. But a deaf old lady has got less than they've got? I'm just lost. And the sheer brutality of it. A group of teenagers knock down an old woman who can barely walk. So they get something out of this? Can't be money, because usually the old lady hasn't got any. So what? You'd have to be a psychiatrist. Oh, they don't know why. Perhaps the kids are just mental. No, I won't buy that. When we get them back to the Nick, they, they know all the answers. They never say any of the wrong things. There's something missing inside. I don't know, they're normal, but they're not normal. Moral imbecility. What? Isn't that the new jargon? Mentally and physically they're okay, but morally they ought to be in wheelchairs. That's why we have to be kind to them. Imbecility? Who the hell dreamt that one up? A uh, phone call for you. Dr. Sand, oh. someone, says you want him to ring. I'm on my way. Mike, I'll buy you the other half later, okay? Uh, Peter? If someone said moral imbecility to you, what would you say? Oh, um... Vicious little bastard. What would you say, sir? No, I think that's quite good. Doctor, I'd uh, like to see her straight away. I'm sorry, Inspector. Well, you rang the station. She came round, didn't she? Well, let's not waste any time. I'm afraid she's dead. She was conscious for about seven or eight minutes, then, then back into a coma. She died almost immediately. I, I'm very sorry. No, well, don't be sorry for me. But she talked a little. I was there. What did she say? And we got it on the recorder. After you'd gone, I took my cassette recorder down to the wall, just in case. The nurse switched it on when she started to talk. It's, it's in my office. Okay, 
Let's hear it. Please. That's all it was. I'm sorry I couldn't keep her alive, Inspector. I hope you have more luck than me. I won't be relying on luck, Doctor. Not on this case. Okay. And you reckon the flat next door's been broken into? Hmm. That's uh, a be at one eighteen, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, do you know who lives there, Mrs. Corbett? Yeah. M Mrs. Mrs. Rudge? It's going to be hard to tell if they took anything. They didn't. There wasn't anything to take. Any prints? No, ma'am. That's right. They didn't take anything because it could have been identified. And they wore gloves. When they get into court, they tell the magistrate they can't even write their own names. Hmm. That's pretty. Was. Oh, it's like the real thing. Real? Chelsea, something like that. Oh, valuable? Mike Turnbull on that. And they missed it. Oh no, it was pretty, so they smashed it. That chair wasn't pretty, but it was useful, so they smashed that too. This whole flat mattered to somebody, so they destroyed it. Oh my God. Who did it? What's Mrs. Rudge ever done to anyone? Was she here when it happened? No. Does she know? She died in hospital today. Because of what was done to her. Because there was nobody to keep the scum off. Then that's what it's like, isn't it? Who did it? Kit. And yet there's always a reason. Yeah, well, it doesn't have to be a good reason. Young people have to live in the society that we make for them. They're as much the victims as Mrs. Rudge. Oh, you know what it's like round here. Concrete and tarmac and everyone on the make from top to bottom. They don't give a damn about the young. And when something like this happens, everyone turns on them. Suddenly they remember the kids. They didn't ask to be brought up in this rat trap. Who did, Miss Hubble? I mean, you think that, that people that torture old women and then wreck their flats deserve our sympathy, do you? You think that it's our fault, yours and mine? Some of it. What about the other part, the part that isn't our fault? We behave like monsters, but we expect our children to behave like saints. No, I'm not talking about mischief. I'm not even talking about petty crime. We've always had that. I'm talking about sadism. About terrifying old folk for kicks because there's nothing much else to do that night. And don't try the unemployment argument on me because most of the kids that do this are still at school. Don't you think you're being a bit unfair? Unfair? Mrs. Rudge is lying in the morgue, burnt and kicked to death. And I'm being unfair. I think I caught your inspector at the wrong moment. You reckon? a thing. Okay? 
bloody yobs. If they had tried that ten years ago... Oh, I know, I know. Uh, have you got far to go? No, just around the corner. One of these days they'll kill somebody. Now, what are the police doing about it? They keep getting more money, but it doesn't seem to do no good, does it? Thanks, miss. Thanks. No, it's all, Mr. Bridges. Always a pleasure to talk to the press. Who's been shouting his mouth off? Someone from this Nick has told the courier that we have a special problem with blacks. Now, who is it? Well, if I find out who it is, it won't be a blacks he has a special problem with. What can I do for you? I want to come off the Rudge case. What? Look, I don't know how to say this, really, but I... I just can't think clearly about it anymore. They broke into a flat last night. As if a pack of wild animals got loose. I mean, there wasn't much there to start with by the time they'd got through it. When I first saw what they did to the old lady, I was sick. When she died, I got so angry I couldn't even drive the car straight. And now the flat. They couldn't get their hands on her, so they did the next best thing. Now, I tell you, if ever I get my hands on them, I'll kill them. I don't trust myself anymore, so I can't do the job properly. I'm just waiting to come face to face with them. Why, right, because they wrecked the oh, flat? Oh, no, but he just brought everything together. The, the, the violence, the, the stupidity, the, the waste, of the sheer evil of it. That social worker turned up. She talked as if she was reading it out of a book. Oh, I blew my top. I said a lot more than I, than I should have done. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just not right. For, for this case, at this moment, I shall end up murdering somebody. And don't tell me to go home and forget about it. I'll feel better in the morning because I won't. You didn't see her. Well, what's so different about it? We let it happen. It happened. We didn't let it happen. We're not responsible for what goes on out there. We just clean up afterwards. Well, you didn't hear her. I've got a tape in my office. They're the last words that Mrs. Rudge ever spoke. She died of terror. Oh, sit down, Maggie. Now, look, I'd rather no, stand... Please, just sit down. One, you're not coming off the case. Two, if you cock it up, it's my fault, not yours. Three, this is the worst moment of the lot. It's all still with you. The body, the bruises, the burns, smashed up flat. You're worried you won't be able to handle it. You know, it's going to be bloody difficult finding those kids. That's making you angry and frustrated. Which brings us back to point number one. You're staying on the case till you bring those vermin in. The sooner you get started, the better. Only way, Inspector. Russell. No, no, wrong, wrong, wrong. Vicky Smith fled the country a couple of years back. What? South Africa. Oh, you reckon? Oh, uh, there was nothing, man. No prints, nothing at all. Well, just one thing. Where is this? Stuck to the electric fire. There was nothing else in the flat that colour. You sure? Well, nothing leather. Electric fire? See, I reckon it could be off a shoe. If someone knocked their foot against the fire, they might have scraped a bit of the leather off. Green shoe? Well, it's just an idea, man. But they did go berserk up there, you know, chucking things about, kicking things. I wonder if it was a girl. Yeah, could be. Good. Nothing else. Huh. They were too careful. It's nearly ten o'clock, you know. Oh, is it? Like right, a cup of coffee. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Thanks, Jake. Any luck? You know, I never knew there were so many shades of green. Oh, I don't know. I think I'll give it a rest. Look at it. Don't you ever work? I start early. Huh? Like a cup of coffee, sir. No, thanks. I'm going for something a little stronger. And I hope I'm not going alone. No, you most certainly are. It may all look better in the morning. Never does. <laughs> Good night, Jake. Good night, Jake. Good night. Do you think it's a good idea working this late? I don't know. Oh, uh, 
This isn't Chelsea. It's a copy, probably made in Germany, turn of the century, not worth anything. To you? Look, you asked me to find out... I'm a... sorry. I'm sorry. How's your crooked art collector? Shy. Doesn't like talking on the phone. Probably in South America by now. Fashionable. We're not getting very far, are we, you and I? Mike. If there weren't any villains, this job would be easy. As it is, it's not just hard. Sometimes it's bloody impossible. That's what they want you to think. Look, you're not going back to the Nick tonight. Why don't you come and have a bite to eat? No, I can't. Steve's expecting me. Phone him. I fall asleep in the middle of the soup. They don't serve soup at this place. Another night. Maybe Thursday. Firm? If nothing crops up, firm. You're on. Maggie, you're right? Oh, uh, 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 no, sir. She's in court this morning. The Williams brothers. The what? The Williams. Oh, yeah. And what do you want? The Rudge case, sir. Make up your mind which you'll sell first, won't you? The Rudge case or that crossword puzzle? Miss. All right. What the, the, come on. Up. Oh. All right. Taking a plus was pretty easy, wasn't it, eh? Getting rid of it was a bit more difficult. Come on. So what was all the hurry? I don't have to answer no questions. You nicked a purse from an old lady's bag. I never. He planted that. Okay, so he planted it. So what was all the hurry? Thought it was trying to pick me up. Well, he looks the sort. Miss Lorna Baines, 43 William Street, SE5. All right, so you don't live around here. Do you work around here? Find out. Time you bought yourself a new pair of shoes, isn't it? You look as if you've been rock climbing in those, or are they your favourite pair? Sergeant, I want someone to go down to 43 William Street and uh, see how many pairs of shoes Miss Baines has got, and uh, 
Bring him in a spare bone. What's all this about, Lorna? You've made two mistakes already. One, you kept those shoes, you should have chucked them. Two, you tried to run. Now you're about to make a third mistake. You're going to tell me that you're a good, honest, hard-working girl that's never done anyone any harm in all her life. Now, I won't buy that, and you know I won't buy it. What I want from you is information. I don't know what you're talking about. What were you doing on Monday night? All right, what were you doing on Tuesday night? Nothing. Whereabouts were you doing nothing? Don't know. Can't remember. Take your shoes off. Get them lost. What the hell is this? Slight lack of cooperation, sir. She bloody attacked him. You saw them. Shut it. Philip's gonna need a warrant. You in a hurry? No, hang on. Oh, look at that. No, he doesn't have to go down there now. I've got what I want here. I found it flat. Yep. You ain't a bit of bother, aren't you? I don't know what you're talking about. Sergeant, get a bag for those shoes. Yep, perfect fit. Right, Lorna Baines. Now, I'm going to tell you what I know, and you can tell me what you know. And you're going to sit there until we're finished. Well, I'll say nothing till I get my shoes back. Last Monday night, you were at flat 118, Coventry House Hill Green Estate. That's right. Mrs. Rudge's flat. can do you for criminal damage. No problem. We can prove that you were there. What I want to know is who were the others? Are you saying you were on your own? Well, is that right, that you were on your own? Okay, so, you were on your own. You let yourself in. You didn't have to break the door down because you already had a key. Trouble is, there was no key in your bag. Oh, what a shame. So perhaps somebody else had the key. Perhaps I rang the bell and the old lady let me in. Let you in? Yeah, why not? Why the hell should she let you in? I was going to help her clean up the flat, wasn't I? Take her back. Come on. You do it for the burglary? Do it for the damage. Do it for the GBH too. Why not? It wasn't her. She was there. It could have been. You don't call somebody ginger when they've got black hair. Well, the old lady was probably raving. She wasn't properly conscious anyway. No, that's why I think I don't think she made it up. Anyhow, I reckon Baines is scared. Why? Oh, it's just a feeling, but something's bothering her. Yeah, she's bothered about being charged. Oh, no, not exactly. I don't think she's frightened of us. Something else. Somebody else. Well, you think she's covering up for somebody? Do a deal. Make it worth a while. You said yourself she's not the ringleader. No. Why not? Baines was there. Baines watched them torturing the old lady. She may even have helped. I'm not doing a deal with Baines. Oh, Maggie, why do you have to make it so hard on yourself, eh? Shall we uh, try again in the morning, ma'am? No. We'll try again now. Do you know what the time is? Nope. Go and fetch her. Sound of bloody Russians, though, here, ain't it? Never let you sleep. Sit down. Who was with you at Mrs. Rudge's flat? Oh, Christ. Leave it out. Look at that. Now that one.
You know, I think I know what's bothering you. Oh, good. The identification parade. They ain't proved nothing. And we fixed. haven't had one, have we? Yeah, well, when the old ladies had a good look no. at through the key out. There won't be an identification parade. Not in this case. Why not? You think about it. What's she on about? I'd do what she says. Think about it. You see, our woman's sick of something. What's going on? And what's all this about? It's got nothing to do with me. Yeah, I didn't do this. I didn't do nothing. I only went to the flat once that last time. Where's she gone and what's she up to? Hey, she ain't snuffed it, is she? She did. That's right. She died on Tuesday. From injuries inflicted by person or persons unknown. Well, not unknown, exactly. Well, I never did no injury. And that was nothing to do with me. Who then? Look, let me just remind you, we've got about five crimes here, including a violent death, and I've got one solid suspect. That's all I need to go into court with. Yeah, but well, I mean... I might remember something, but... But you'd have to leave me out of this, right? If you give me a word... I think that's all we're going to get. OK, you can take that back. Here, hang on. I said I was going to try and help. Go on, then. Well, it's nothing to do with killing the old woman, right? That was nothing to do with me. If I give you names, I don't want to go up with the rest of them. The way it looks now, you'll be going up on your own. We don't know the names <clears throat> of the rest of them, do we? It's not fair, I mean, I'm... Not what?! There were three of them. I just went along on the last day. Stone Cross and my... my father. But it was really a Chinese idea that I went along to the flat in the first place. You said three. Don't cross. I'm Maureen Fowler. Don't win it. You said three. You don't have to say you said. I mean, you, you don't have to tell her that I said anything. Ginger Dawson. Ginger Dawson. She don't have to know it was me who said it. Where she live? Up Paddington. Fountain Street. Ginger Dawson. She Thanks very much. You can get some sleep now. We can all get some sleep now. in at the Dawson's. The neighbour reckons Mrs. Dawson works down at the street market. Ginger may be there too. OK, let's move.
Belts, genuine ruby necklaces. Hey, give me one pound. Do you want it? What's for that? I? Too small. I too dear, is it? Again. Hmm. I wouldn't put money on it. Who's there? A uh, park, a Dennis Park, isn't it? Yeah, he'll do. You know me, don't you? Do you like wolves? Oh, yes, ma'am. Right, I've got a little job for you. We're looking for a girl, about 17 ginger hair. Now, that's all we know about her. I want you to go back to the first junction if you see a grabber, so I can run. 17 ginger hair. Right, ma'am. I want you the other end of the street. Two of them for a fiver. Ginger around? You're joking. She's probably gone up. Are you a friend of hers? I know a friend of hers. Well, try Aries. Now, hang on, here she comes now. You got a quid, Mum? What for? Oh, just give us a quid. There's a friend of yours here. A what? I've been talking to Lorna. Lorna who? I used to play a bit of rugger. I should have given it up. Got a bit violent. OK. For starters, I want to know where you were and what you were doing from Friday the 1st and Monday the 11th, inclusive. What do you want, a legal representative? Well, just give us his name, we'll get him up here. Refusing to answer questions will buy you nothing. If you don't tell us what you were doing, we'll draw our own conclusions. You'll have to talk when you get into court, you know, and that's where you're going. Now, judges regard silence as contempt. They don't like it. They hate it. Hey. And I hate them. What are you, thick or something? Somebody trying to work, diminish responsibility? Best of luck. No, oh, no, you've been far too careful to get away with that one. You worked everything out. Instead of straightforward mugging on the street, which is always slightly risky and not always profitable, you decided to terrorize an old lady into giving you her pension. When she objected, you tortured her. When she threatened to come to us, you tortured her again. When she didn't turn up one night, you wrecked her flat. When she died... Well, no, I guess the only thing that bothered you was the loss of 27 quid a week. I wouldn't try to minister responsibility. The fact that you behave like something that crept out from under a stone isn't actually going to help. to get you a lawyer at public expense he'll be working for you you can talk to him in private he'll prepare your case all i can say is i'm glad i haven't got his job all right take it back hey you tea i want a cup of tea you got to give it to me i got right
Stand up. Don't screw yourself. No tea. No nothing. You didn't get anywhere. With that sort, there's nowhere to get. Better have a look at that. I've marked the interesting bits. Cause of death was heart failure. Reason for heart failure not determinable. Not determinable. Terminable. All right, don't have a go at me. I didn't write it. She was murdered! But all they're saying is Mrs. Rudge was an old lady. They don't know what condition her heart was in before Dawson got to her. What they do say is recent injuries could have been a contributory factor. That's as far as they'll go. What's wrong with these people? Look, no one's going to stick their neck out unless they're 100% sure. She could have had a dicky heart. They're not sure, so they're not going to say they're sure. Now that still does not let Dawson off the hook. I'll settle for 99% sure. If the legal department press it. Come on, Maggie, face the facts. There is a doubt. Oh, is there hell a doubt? Why do we bother? And that's not all. They had a key to the flat. All right, we're certain. They scared the old lady into giving it to them, but we don't know. It'd be hard to prove. No, it'd be impossible it's to prove. It's unlikely that she gave it to them. No, but it's possible. Look, I want all your paperwork so I can make my recommendations. I'll send the entire lot off to the solicitor's department, then it's up to them. What's the point? Listen. You're a policewoman. As far as the Rudge case is concerned, you've done everything right. You got much further than I thought you would. You found your suspects and you brought them in. And that, for you, is where it ends. Now, you want to weep salt tears about what happens next? Don't do it in my office, please. Tomorrow, I want you to look at the Mickey Smith business, yes? Well done. Day it is? No. Friday. Yesterday was Thursday. So? We had a date. Firm. So long as nothing came up. Something did. Yeah, I know. I heard. They'll get something even if it's only resisting arrest. Oh, great. What do you want then? The cat? The I rope? I think it would help. I'm not deterred of all the ginger Dawsons of this world. There's nothing there. They're just. Solid plastic. They're like a billiard ball. There's no way in. If there was, there'd be nothing to find. It wasn't so bloody revolting. It'd be quite sad. So where are you taking me? You mean that? Yeah. I make it good. I've got a particularly nasty taste in my mouth. Ah, oh, I caught you good. <laughs> Not this time you didn't. Good night, Jake. It, it's Mrs. Pearson. Tell me in the morning. No, she's in the CID room. Oh, Mrs. Pearson? The old lady had a hearing aid. You remember, I brought the bits in. What does she want? Well, she's been told things over her neighbour, decided she ought to do something. So? She wants to tell us all about the ones who mugged her. Get a statement, you know, all the details. That, they were girls. One of them had red hair. Old lady reckons she'd know if she saw her again. Unmistakable. Wants to tell us all about it. Prepare to stand up in court. Looks like a good witness. Ginger hair. That's right. Look, Mike, I'm sorry, but... Something came up. Look, I can't walk out on this one. I mean, if it was Ginger, and the old lady is prepared to identify her, then I've got her. Got her. This time I'll do better than resisting arrest. We'll, um, fix up time for next week, okay? Good luck. <laughs>